Hello everybody, this video is on performing titration and titration calculations. Before you perform titration, it is important that you've prepared the right standard solution of the correct concentration and you've rinsed all the equipment appropriately and set them up in the correct manner. The first time you perform a titration, this is always known as a rough titration. In a rough titration, you're trying to determine the approximate titer volume that's required of the titrant to achieve the equivalence point or the end point of the indicator. In a rough titration, your titer volume will never be accurate because you'll be adding the titrant from the burettes in a very quick manner to determine this approximate volume. After your rough titration, patience is very key as you want to slow down the rate of the titrant that's being added from the burettes as you approach the end point of the indicator. When the titrant is being added, make sure you swell the conical flask constantly to allow the end point to occur quickly. Let's use an example to go through the concept of rough titration. 25 milliliters of 0.05 mole per liter of sodium carbonate, so this is my standard solution, is titrated with a solution of nitric acid. So this will be my unknown solution. The titer volume is measured to be 22.38 milliliters. In this titration, the first titration will be inaccurate because it will be the rough titration. The titer volume will be the volume of titrant added when the equivalence point is reached. And in the case of an indicator titration, this is when the indicator changes color. It's important to know that titer volume will not include the rough titration. It will be the volume that's achieved in subsequent titrations after your rough titration. The 22.3 milliliters is the average titer volume. In any titration, you're expected to repeat the titration at least three times after the rough titration or until you achieve consistent volumes. An average is then calculated to ensure the reliability of your final results. This is an example of data from a titration experiment. The first rough titration was 22.65, and you can see the subsequent four trials of titration achieve a lower volume. Rough titration usually gives a higher volume because in the very first time you perform a titration, you're likely to over add the titrant from the burette as you don't know when to expect the end point of the indicator to occur. When you're calculating the average titer volume, we only take reliable and consistent data, not including the rough titration. By adding the four titer volumes and dividing by four, this gives me an average titer volume of 22.38 milliliters. Once I've calculated the titer volume from the burettes, I can then proceed with my calculations of the concentration of my unknown solution. So for this particular titration, we should write a balance game equation. I have sodium carbonate, which is my standard solution reacts with nitric acid, which is my unknown solution, produces a salt of sodium nitrate, water, and carbon dioxide gas. We need to put two in from the sodium nitrate to have two sodiums on both sides, and put two in from the nitric acid so that there are two nitrate ions on both sides. The number of moles of sodium carbonate can be calculated by times in the concentration of the standard solution by the aliquot volume that's used for each titration trial. The concentration is 0.05 mole per liter times by the volume, which is 0.025 liters. This gives me 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. The moles of nitric acid that was added from the burette will then be equal to 1.25 times 10 to minus 3 times by 2, which is 2.5 times 10 to minus 3 moles. And this corresponds to the tighter volume of roughly 22.38 milliliters. So then we can use the volume and the moles to calculate concentration of nitric acid, which is equal to the moles divided by the volume. The moles is 2.5 times 10 to minus 3 divided by the average tighter volume, which is 0 0.02238, 0 0.11 mole per liter. 30 milliliters of hydrofluoric acid is titrated with 0 0.035 mole per liter of sodium carbonate. So again, because we're given the concentration of the sodium carbonate, this is my standard solution. The results are shown in the table here. We've got four different titer volumes. It's important for you to recognize that the first titer volume is the rough titration, as it is much higher compared to the other three. The reaction between hydrofluoric acid and sodium carbonate can be represented by the following chemical equation, which produces sodium fluoride salt and water, as well as carbon dioxide gas. Again, we should add two to the sodium fluoride to make sure there's two sodium on both sides and add two in front of the hydrofluoric acid to then balance the number of fluorines on both sides. 
The average titer volume is calculated by adding the titer 2, 3, and 4, excluding the rough titration. And this gives me 26.75 milliliters. In this titration, the titer volume is for the sodium carbonate solution. In other words, the standard solution of sodium carbonate is the titrant that was added to the burette. I know this because I am already given the volume of the acid solution. The volume here is the aliquot, or the amount of the solution added to the conical flask. So for this titration, imagine your burette contains the sodium carbonate, which is the standard, and your conical flask contains the acid solution, which is the unknown solution. This allows me to find the moles of sodium carbonate because I know its concentration as it is my standard and I know its volume, which is the tighter volume, 0.02675 and this gives me roughly 9.36 times 10 to the power minus 4 moles. My moles of hydrofluoric acid is therefore 9.36 times 10 to the minus 4 multiplied by 2, which is roughly 1.9 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. So this is due to a 2 to 1 reaction ratio. And finally, my concentration of HF is equal to the number of moles divided by the volume of the solution. So 1.9 times 10 to minus 3 divided by 0.03 liters. And this gives me 0.0624 mole a liter. Three significant figures. A student performs a titration to determine the concentration of a 1 liter solution of sulfuric acid. 10 milliliters of the solution is transferred to a 100 milliliter volumetric flask and diluted with distilled water. 25 milliliter aliquots of this diluted solution are titrated against a 0.1 mole per liter solution of sodium hydrogen carbonate. The average titer volume was 33.4 milliliters. So first of all, let's write a balanced chemical equation to represent the neutralization between sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4, and sodium hydrogen carbonate. Keep in mind that sulfuric acid is a diprotic acid, so this produces sodium sulfate as the salt, water, and carbon dioxide gas. To balance this equation, we should put a 2 in front of sodium hydrogen carbonate to have two sodiums on both sides. The standard solution for this titration is 0.1 mole per liter of sodium hydrogen carbonate. The titrant, that is the chemical that's put into the burette, is the standard solution. So the average titer volume of 33.4 milliliters, this refers to the sodium hydrogen carbonate. Therefore, we can use the concentration and the titer volume to calculate the moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate. The moles of sulfuric acid can therefore also be worked out, and this is exactly half that of sodium hydrogen carbonate. So 1.67 times 10 to minus 3 moles. This is due to a 2 to 1 ratio. We can then use the moles divided by the volume of the dilute solution, which is the 25 milliliter aliquot that's used in each titration, 1.67 times 10 to minus 3 divided by 0.025 liters, and that gives us 0.0668 mole per liter. For questions like this, where there's dilution is involved, be very careful with your final answer. This concentration is for the diluted solution. After the 10 milliliters of the original solution has been transferred to a 100 milliliter flask and diluted with distilled water up to 100 milliliters. To find the original concentration, we need to first determine what was the dilution factor. The original volume of the solution was 10 mils, and this is diluted to 100 mils. So the difference in volume here is, has increased by a factor of 10, which means the dilution factor is also 10. And we'll leave this in three significant figures. Citric acid is a triprotic acid and is found in lemon juice. A student titrated 25 milliliter samples of lemon juice with a standardized solution of sodium hydroxide that has a concentration of 0.567 mols per liter. The mean titration volume, so that's the titer volume, for the sodium hydroxide was 28.5 milliliters. The molar mass of citric acid is 192.12 grams per mole. What was the concentration of citric acid in the lemon juice? So for titration or neutralization involving polyprotic acid, the most important step in your calculation is to find out the reaction ratio or the stoichiometric ratio between the acid and the base. Sodium hydroxide is an arrhenius base, and for every one mole of sodium hydroxide, we can expect it to produce exactly one mole of hydroxyl ions. For every one mole of hydroxyl ions, it will neutralize exactly one mole of proton, to produce one mole of water molecule. 
Now, that means if we have one molecule of citric acid, which is tripotic, we'll end up producing three equivalents of protons. One citric acid will give you three protons, and this requires three hydroxides to neutralize. And since one equivalent of sodium hydroxide produces only one hydroxide ion, we'll need three sodium hydroxides for every one molecule of citric acid. That means the ratio between citric acid to sodium hydroxide will be 1 to 3. This is the stoichiometric ratio. The moles of sodium hydroxide is equal to its concentration, 0.567, multiplied by the average tidal volume, 0.02850, and this is equal to 0.0162 moles. Therefore, the moles of citric acid is 0.0162 divided by 3, and that is 5.4 times 10 to minus 3 moles. So this is due to a 3 to 1 ratio. The concentration of citric acid in lemon juice is then 5.4 times 10 to minus 3 moles divided by the volume of lemon juice, which is 0.025 liters, and this is 0.215 moles per liter. This is the concentration of citric acid in lemon juice. However, the question wants us to express the answer in grams per liter. Instead of expressing the concentration in moles per litre, we need to convert the moles into grams per litre. So we have to find out how many grams of citric acid there are in 0.215 moles. The mass of citric acid is equal to the moles of citric acid, which we already have, multiplied by its molar mass. And we are given this by the question to be 192.12 grams per mole. So to make this conversion, we can simply multiply the moles by 192.12, which is a molar mass, and that yields a value of 41.4 grams per liter. And I'll leave this in three significant figures again.